Jams, jams, jams. Picture books and jams. Welcome, everybody, to PB Jams. Music and picture books. What a perfect sandwich. Squish them all together. What a yummy snack. PB Jams. Ooh. Yummy books and music. PB Jams. Reading, writing, teaching. Jams, what a yummy treat! Jamming PBs all the time. PB Jam. Well, good morning. Um, thank you so much for joining. I say good morning. It could be afternoon or night when you're joining us, but but Lisa and I are here in the morning. So good morning from us to you, and thank you for joining us for another um, fabulous episode of PB Jams. I am here with Lisa Tolan who is the author of How to Be a Rock Star, which is illustrated by Daniel Duncan and published by G.P. Putnam's Sons, which is an imprint of Penguin and Random House. So good morning, Lisa, and thanks for being here. Oh, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to. to I am here. too. So this book is coming out really soon. What's our what's our latest publication date? It's August 2nd. Yeah. Right around the corner. <laughs> just a few days how does that feel oh it's it's good it's exciting this is my first book so it's um uh really exciting and a little bit nerve-wracking time but um I'm hoping it's it'll be the first time that like you know an actual audience has read this as opposed to just me reading it to my critique partners or whatever so right I'm excited for it it is an exciting time Talk to us a little bit about the inspiration for this story, Lisa. Where did it come from? Sure. sure. So, well, How to Be a Rockstar is kind of a handy guide for kids on how to, you know, rock your house like a stadium. So it's, you know, using your stuffed animals as backup singers, improvising your instruments, you know, dealing with your critics. It's basically whatever you need to, to rock the house. Um, and it's definitely inspired 100% by my children and um, my life with them. So my my oldest son in particular, from the minute, probably before he could walk, he was kind of, he was always really into music. And then when he was 18 months old, we went to a, a Halloween party where another kid had a, a ukulele as part of his costume. And my son just would not let go of that ukulele. Oh, he was like, awesome. I need this. I'm going to have it. And we kept kind of trying to say, okay, no, he, he gets it back. And he was like, no. So, and he had never been like that with anything. He wasn't the kind of kid to, to steal toys or, you know, dominate things at the playground. So we were like, I guess we need to get this kid a ukulele. Um, and ever since then, basically that's, that's his favorite toy. It's his thing. He's still, you know, jamming out on guitar. He's 11 now. So um, we spent a lot of hours as a family doing kind of family band and, um, he made a, when his little brother came along, they made their own band called the kids. And, okay. um, so it was a lot of fun at our house. And I just really wanted to reflect that joy in a book, you know? So, um, I think a lot of books about music that I've seen were all about stage fright and like, oh no, is, can he perform? Can he not perform? And I didn't, experience that with my son he was so he has he was so young and he was so into it he was never like worried about performing he just loved it so I wanted to kind of let other kids and families I hope have like a tiny bit of that joy too yeah so fun I definitely think that joy comes across in the book it's really it's really fabulous and I love the whole family band aspect and bringing in the rest of the family and a lot of this is imagination driven um, and so I love that imaginative play I think that's something um, kids don't get to do as often as I feel like we did when we were growing up um, so yeah lots of super fun elements in this book how about the musical connection? So obviously you've already talked about your son and his love for music and and so obviously when you write a book called how to be a rock star I mean music is kind of in here in all of that yeah. but talk to us a little bit about about this maybe the specific musical connections and maybe your musical connections as well yeah sure I mean it's funny because when I first started telling people about you know getting the book contract and that this is going to happen the, the first question I got was are you a rock star <laughs> and I was like uh what <laughs> clearly yes. no um but she was like well then how do you know how to be a rock star and so <laughs> um I think 
with me and with the book, the message is really, I mean, of course it's like, let's have fun with music and really play, but it's also yeah. that you're already a rock star and you do right. not need to, to be a literal rock star to, to really have fun with music and enjoy it. Um, and I think I've been talking to people about how to encourage kids to love music. And um, one of the things that they've told me is that it's really through play. Like that's, kids yeah. don't want to sit and listen to music. They want to dance. They want to move. They want to shake. They want to make music themselves and pound on things. So um, I, th I think and hope that this book encourages that kind of play. So I personally have very little musical background. I kind of, you know, gave up the flute in eighth grade and that was about, <laughs> about the extent of my education. Um, but I've always been a lover of music and my son has really introduced me to a lot. I mean, he's, yeah. He's 11 now and he's like buying King Crimson albums and that, you know, that's not music I was familiar with. So right. he's kind of um, expanded our horizons and really when he was four, when he was starting pre-K, his favorite book was a Beatles encyclopedia. Oh, wow. So, you know, we spent a lot of time with that and <laughs> reading it to him yeah. because he could read himself. So, um, so he, we've learned a lot just through him. Yeah, you know, I, I love what you were saying earlier about how, how early and how young he started loving music. And I think um, everything that I've ever seen has been like that. Like kids really grasp music early if it's going to be something that's, that's important to them. And mm -hmm. plus, which I think almost all babies love music and respond to music, even if it's not going to be something that they carry with them. But like with your son, if it's something that um, that they're really going to grasp hold of, that a lot of times it happens really early. They're either singing really early or like he, you know, um, latching onto the ukulele. And I love that he's still doing strings. Like that's that's really fun. That's so cool. And it's a great message for um, all of you parents who are watching, you know, to really, like Lisa said, to nurture that love of music and give them those opportunities. Super, super important. And, and certainly speaks to the importance of my job in the elementary school to teach music um, because, you know, a lot, of, a lot of parents don't have either the desire or the know-how to, to really nurture that musical gift in their kids. And so that it becomes incumbent upon us then in the school setting to try to nurture that gift as much as we can for the kids that are not getting it at home, whether, you know, their parents can't or won't. Um, so yeah, lots of really, really great stuff right off the bat. I'll say too, for parents, um, one of the things that Joan Koenig, she's the author of a book called The Musical Child, and she told me a lot of parents get afraid to, um, to make music with their kids because they think they're not musicians. But she's saying like, you know, if you don't have an, a degree in English from Oxford, you still talk to your kids. You still use language with your kids. So you right. should do the same with music. You don't have to go to Juilliard or be a musician to be able to sing, dance, and play with them. So I thought that was important because I think a lot of people feel inhibited. They think they're not musicians. I'm definitely not a musician, but I, you know, my, as a baby, he responded so powerfully to music that I started just singing all the time, you know, making up songs. And, and I think that, you know, encouraged him to know that he could make up songs too. Yeah. And I think another thing, at least for like, for my mom, because I, I was one of those wannabe rock stars, like I was rocking the house. Um, but I wanted, like, that was a life that I thought I wanted at like 11 and 12 and 13. But I think my mom was really fearful of <clears throat> going into something. I mean, you know, they talk about the difference in pursuing your dream and, you know, making a living, right? And so I think for a lot of parents, they get kind of freaked out that, oh, if I encourage this too much, then they're going to want to do this music thing. And then they're not going to be a productive adult, you know? And so I think that was certainly the case for, um, you know, for, for my mom and I think for a lot of parents too. So, but, but I think it's important to note that you can do both, right? And you, you can maintain music as a hobby for the rest of your life without using it. You know, it's worked out great for me because I ended up, you know, back at, Lisa and I were talking before we started the, the actual show, 
that, you know, I taught second grade for 17 years before I transitioned to music. So for now in my life, it's worked out that I'm kind of making my living with music, but that wasn't the case for a long time, but I still played in community orchestra and sang on the worship team at church. I mean, there's a lot of ways that they can still enjoy that music as adults without having to make their living from it. And for a lot of people, it does work out that they can make a living from music. Yeah. So that's another important point, I think. Um, what about, so when I was reading, when I was reading this book, I, I was like, oh my goodness, like it's such a beautiful marriage of art and text. Yeah. And, and, you know, as a picture book author, <clears throat> we know that that's, that's our job is to only tell half the story mm -hmm. and to allow the illustrator to tell the other half of the story. It's really hard. Like, I think it's especially hard because you're taught as a writer all through school and, and in all, you know, to be specific and to write details and to be descriptive. And then to be a picture book author, you kind of have to set all that aside and, and you're still doing it, but like, it's so scaled down. Um, so talk to us about maybe that process of, of only writing half the story, but also how did that beautiful marriage of art and text come about? Because I think this particular book does a really nice job of marrying the art and the text. Oh, thank you so much. Well, of course, that's all down to Daniel Duncan, um, the illustrator who is just an amazingly talented artist. Um, and I, I, I did when I was thinking, like, I thought visually and I thought about how an illustrator could have fun with different things so like showing the different kinds of music within the yeah. book and playing dress up I think that that added to um, a kind of automatic sense of fun but he also added a lot of his own you know jokes and references that I hadn't put in there that he really came up with on his own so he made um, the family kind of or the, the kids tour the the house with their band yeah. so he made the like tour posters I love so, those. Like, I yeah love those. yeah yeah so that was totally his idea and and I think it it's really fun um so yeah I, I I think I tend toward understated or dry humor anyway so I think sometimes that lends itself well to illustrations because you can say one thing and the the illustrations show something else so like you know, I, at one point they're mobbed by crazed fans and that's the grandparents. So right. that was really right. like the only, I think, illustration note that I had was to okay. make that joke clear um, was that the, the fans are going to be the grandparents. So. I love that. Yeah. So not many art notes and, and you and he, now normally, um, for those of you who may not know that normally authors and illustrators don't really communicate as they're, um, as they're working, did you guys have any conversations or no? Not, no. Um, so again, you know, we kind of both go through our editor and the art right. director. Um, so if he, you know, with his initial sketches, it was like, do you have any notes on that? And, but I think they really want to be careful yeah. that writers don't get too bossy basically. Right. But yeah. um, that said, we're, you know, friendly on social media and he likes the same you know soccer team that my husband and son like and so I think um you know we, we've had a, a nice kind of congenial relationship but before the the sketches came in or anything that was I think taboo <laughs> right 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 yeah really nicely done really nicely done so is there anything, so we've talked about the music, we've talked about the inspiration, we've talked about the art. Is there anything that you would like people to know about the book that we haven't talked about yet? I'm going to ask you what's coming next, what we can look forward to, sure. but about this particular book, is there anything else you'd like to share? No, I think it just, um, I hope that it, you know, I think it's a funny book and a, hopefully a fun read aloud. And I hope um, it's clear that it came from the heart. It's from, you know, our own kids. Um, I think people also like ask sometimes about the little brother and where that came from. And that was really like when, when his, my son's younger brother was born, mm. he would get really frustrated you know, first of all, you have to be quiet when a baby's sleeping. And so if you're a kid who likes to make a lot of noise, that's frustrating. And right. he really wanted, you know, his parents' attention all the time. He wanted to keep doing these family bands and, you know, I'd be off with the baby. So it was not really the same dynamic. And so we, um, 
we really tried to instill in him that like, even if your, you know, guitar strap gets twisted, even if things are going wrong, you know, you got to keep playing, that's rock and roll. And that's really, I think, the message of the book. Um, and at one point he told to me, he said, um, even if your diaper's wet, you got to keep playing. That's <laughs> rock and roll. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, that that theme of perseverance definitely does come through. I'm glad you mentioned that because that's something we didn't talk about. And that's definitely a big theme in the book and so important for kids. Well, for all of us, right? Because I mean, certainly for those of us who are authors, I mean, perseverance is absolutely key. Yeah. Um, But for kids, you know, it's really easy for them to give up and it's great to instill in them that idea that no matter what happens, you, you gotta, you gotta keep going, you know, yeah. you gotta keep, I mean, you can't give up every time it gets hard. And you're, you're right for writers, especially it's kind of a message to myself too. For um, sure. I think like with my kids, it's like, there have certainly been a lot of times when I thought, oh, I should just quit writing for sure. Um, yeah. But you don't want to like model that for your kids. So in a way, having them has really inspired me to keep going. It inspired me to start because one of the reasons I, you know, started this was, I'd always wanted to write a picture book, but I'd never actually done it, you know, which is a a different thing. Um, And I realized I was spending all this money on like guitar lessons and everything for my kids. Mm -hmm. But I, and I was trusting that they would learn these things um, at the age of five or whatever. And I wasn't trusting myself to learn a new skill or investing that same kind of money in myself to learn a new skill. So I signed up for a class, took it, and, and then off we went. Nice. I love one one of the things when I hear you talking, Lisa, is how that not only do your kids learn from you, but you learn from your kids. And I think that's that's a fabulous way, I think, to parent. It's a fabulous way to teach. And I think that's that's true for most of us who deal with young people on a regular basis. Um, I mean, I learn from them all the time from my students. I don't have personal kids, but I have a, over 500 <laughs> <laughs> um, students and so that's a lot of learning yeah. um, but you know they'll ask questions that I don't think to ask or they'll you know pursue things in a way that I, I wouldn't think to and they'll come in and they'll share things that they're passionate about that I haven't been or or, or we'll find a connection to something you know we do um, a may the fourth be with you and we do a big star wars week or two in my music classroom every year and and always those star wars you know, fans kind of come out of the woodwork and then they're telling me all these details, which luckily I'm a fan, right? (laughs) So we can have those conversations, but they're all the time telling me stuff that I didn't know because I'm not as deep a fan as like my husband's the big fan and I'm just a little fan. Um, (laughs) So they're all the time asking me questions or telling me, or I'll Google, like they'll go, well, what about, and I go, Gee, I don't know, but I'll find out, you know, while, while you listen to this song, I'm going to Google and find, you know, find the answer. So it's great that we can learn from them as much as maybe more (laughs) and they learn from us. I mean, I think that's super important. They're so alive to the world and they, they do notice things and have questions that we don't think to think about. Um, Yeah. And I think that's really great that you say, I don't know. And I'll find out because I think to them, it's really important that first of all, hey, they came up with a really smart question that even the teacher doesn't know the answer to. Exactly. That's very validating in a way. Um, sure. And it's also showing them how you work through problems, you know, like, so I think that's, that's great you do that. I think it's important for them to know that they're, you're never going to have all the answers. Even mm-hmm. when you get to be an old grown up with gray hair like me, you know, I, I still don't know everything, you know, like there's still things I have to ask and I have to look up and I have to check with the experts. And so that's very, I think, freeing for everybody to know that it, the pressure's not on for you to to have all the answers or to know everything. It's okay to say, I don't know, you know, that's, mm-hmm. that's a very important part of life, I think, is just to be able to say, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So important that we model that for our kids. <clears throat> So talk to us about what's next. What else is coming from you? Where are you? And what can we look forward to? Yeah. So, um, well, I have another book, picture book coming out next year. Um, It's called Can You Imagine the Life and Art of Yoko Ono? So it's a a picture book biography of Yoko Ono, who I was very fortunate to interview um, many years ago. Back when I was at the Associated Press. Yeah, I got to 
interview her at the Dakota and it was, she obviously is an amazing woman, um, but she made a very a strong impression on me at the time. And I think learning more about her and her life, um, I think is a very, I hope it will be very inspiring to kids because she's just one of these people who, again, if you wanna talk about perseverance, you know, she's been vilified and hated for so much of her life, but she's, she's just kept trucking, you know, she didn't let any of that get in her way. So um, I find her to be an incredibly inspiring person and I hope kids will too. That is fabulous. Awesome. Yeah. Good stuff to look forward to. Thanks. Well, thank you, Lisa, for joining us for an episode of PB Jams and talking about how to be a rock star. Such a fun book. So uh, viewers and listeners, if you have not, and you haven't yet, because it's not quite out, but um, by the time this comes out, it'll be getting really close. So, or actually it'll be um, maybe a day or two past. So get your hands on that book, you know, get your hands on it, share it with all the rockers in your life, all the wannabe rockers. Um, they are going to love it. You're going to love it. It's a great read aloud. There's lots of teaching tips and, and, tactics and strategies i'm going to link all that up below i'm going to link all of lisa's information up for you below where you can buy the book and all her socials um it, Le i always try to remind you that one way you can support our authors even if you don't buy her book go check it out from the library do a request share out with your friends and family that you love the book and where they can get hold of it um, that word of mouth is so important you can go on amazon or goodreads and leave a review um anything else lisa that i've left out how they can support those are all absolutely wonderful things and i'm obviously very much appreciated um but yeah even if you know borrowing it from the library is a great thing sharing it with somebody you love would be a wonderful and meaningful thing to me so. yeah order is a gift for all those young rockers in your life yeah lots of great ways you can support even if it doesn't come out of your pocketbook Money can be tight, but you can still support these amazing authors and their and their books. Um, and speaking of books, Lisa is going to be kind and generous enough to give away one of the books. And you can be a lucky winner of um, a copy of her book and some book swag. And I'm sure she'll be happy to sign the book for you as well. So in order to, to be eligible for that, all you need to do is leave a comment on the blog post here below. And, and that's it. Um, and I will choose a lucky winner um, before we get to the next episode of PB Jams and I'll share out and connect you guys. Um, and so please do that. Leave a comment so that you can get a fabulous copy of, um, of this How to Be a Rockstar, this wonderful, uh, super fun book. I know you'll love it. So leave the comment, make a request, do all those fun things, support these authors um, as they come on to PB Jams and share all their amazing inspiration and insight and author process. You're going to see some um, author tips below from Lisa. She's going to share some good tips for those of you who are in the trenches like me trying to trying to get published and agented. And um, so thanks again for joining us. Um, check out those teaching tips if you're one of my teacher friends and um, or my music teacher friends. And if you're a writer, there's some writing prompts. I'm even going to link up for you a peanut butter jelly snack because we don't call it PB Jams for nothing. So check out the snack if you're a PBJ fan and uh, we'll see you next time for PB Jams. Thanks for joining us. Jams, 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 jams. Picture books and jams. We'll see you next time.